Hey, Jim Remley here with E Real Estate Coach. Couple of uh, quick tips when it comes to pricing. Uh, we're coming up to the end of summer, and uh, a couple of news media outlets have put out some uh, relatively bad stories about the market that can impact our sellers' thinking, our buyers' thinking. So we need to make sure that we're dealing with facts, not just what the media is reporting. So I caught this story from CNBC uh, this week. There was a report from Zillow that said 14% of all listings in June uh, saw a price cut. Now we're in now late August. Of course, these are delayed numbers, uh, but price growth is slowing in 35 of the largest metro markets. What this means to our sellers, it's all local. We want to make sure we're checking our local market stats. But in general, with the agents that I'm talking to across the country, we are seeing some changes in the market. And certainly, even if you weren't having changes in the market, if you were just having a standard summer market, when you cut down to the last two weeks of summer, last three weeks of summer, it is time to start looking at pricing. So here's a quick script for you when you get down to this last little surge for summer pricing. Uh, I call it my end of summer conversation, super simple. So it just says, hey, so we're coming up on the uh, last few weeks of the summer season. I took a fresh look at what our peer group is doing. By the way, your peer group is 10 listings that are similar uh, to your listing. And I looked at their pricing strategy. Of the 10 properties most similar to our listing, three had price reductions in the last few weeks, let's say two or three weeks, and of those, two or three actually sold. So at this point, based on what I'm telling you, what do you feel like you wanna do? So just put the hot potato in their hands, give them the information, and let them make a decision. Don't take that information back from them. Now, if they do agree to a price reduction really quickly, uh, don't let them do a small, insignificant price reduction. Sometimes you see people reducing prices of $500 or $1,000, which is kind of a easy way out for a seller. They give you something, but really nothing. Um, the way to get them beyond that is you want to talk about at least a 5% price reduction. The reason is because when you do a price reduction, it feeds back out to the MLS through all the portals. Every buyer that has an interest in any property similar is going to see it in their, in their feed through an email or a text. And so if you're doing like a 1% price drop or less than that, it's going to show up as a 1% price drop. And the way I explain that to sellers is I say, if you're walking through the mall, and you saw a 1% sale on something, would you run in and buy something? Probably not. It's gotta be 5% or more to generate some interest. So give that some thought. Now there's something else that I think is even more powerful, and that's what I call positional pricing. Positional pricing is an exciting way to motivate a buyer that has already seen the home. So this is interesting. So what this is, is a small but significant uh, pricing incentive to a buyer that's already seen the home. So it's not wide, it's not out to the entire market, but imagine a, a buyer's come through the property, has, shown the, uh, has seen the property, and then you text or email the agent that showed the property and said, listen, for your buyer, my seller has agreed to reduce the price to X. We're not uh, announcing this in the MLS for another week or so, but we want to give your buyer a first crack at it at this price. Now your buyer is going to maybe get a little bit more excited about it. It's going to set you apart from the rest of the homes that they saw that week. You could also do that with open house attendees. You could send them a little text after the open house and say, my seller's authorized me to tell you that for you, because you came by and took the time out of your day to see the property, they're willing to adjust the price to this. Uh, and this price reduction won't hit the MLS for the next few days, so you get the first crack at it. It puts a little urgency into the system, gives the buyer something special that no, one other, no other buyer has, and it can really incentivize um, the market to take a second look at your house. To explain that, you could simply say, hey, since price is always the number one motivation for buyers and you're not quite ready for a market-wide price adjustment yet, would you consider offering an incentive price to specific buyers as they show interest in the home? For instance, with a buyer who's just viewed the home or an open house attendee, we could frame it uh, that we're offering it to them before we do a price reduction in the entire market. It could bring your home back to top of mind with some buyers, so I think it could be powerful. If those things don't work, they won't do positional pricing, they won't do a Y price adjustment, let me give you one more third rail. The third rail is financial incentives. So maybe talk to the seller about down payment assistance for buyers, uh, closing cost assistance, prepaid HOAs, prepaid services, prepaid flood insurance, home warranties, allowances for carpet, for paint, for repairs, or commission increases to selling agents. Of course, everything I'm talking about, you want to run by a supervising broker, make sure that it's all appropriate, ethical, and legal in your market, in your area but you wanna maybe think about getting outside the box. Being an order taker no longer is gonna work. We're gonna have to be creative to get these listings sold. We're gonna have to have conversations uh, with uh, folks to encourage them to make their homes more competitive in the market. To drive home that financial incentive conversation, super quick, 
Uh, this is the fallback. You always go for price first, but you might say, so let's consider some other areas that we could motivate a buyer with. Many sellers offer buyers a different kind of financial incentive, like closing costs or down payment assistance. This can set your home apart from the competition, and we can cap the amount. We could say something like, a uh, seller will contribute up to $5,000 in closing cost repairs or in closing costs or financial incentives of some kind. So a few ideas for you on price this morning. Hope you're having a great week and good selling.